let's look at how people might use trusts to do their wealth transfers. All clients should think about using a trust to avoid probate. This is the most typical use of trusts that we have in our, in our clients' estate planning. Get a trust, it's typically called a living revocable trust, put your assets into it during your lifetime or make sure that they're payable to the trust uh, by beneficiary designation or by transfer on death deed, for example. And then those assets will not be subject to probate. Avoiding probate means simplifying the transfer of your wealth, reducing the time and the cost involved in doing it. And most importantly, for my clients, maintaining privacy because probate is a public court supervised process and there's a lot of information in the public court files. If you can avoid probate, you avoid having to file a lot of family information with the court system. We also use trusts to protect children's inheritances from creditors and from divorces. Uh, maybe it's just my clients, but just about every client worries about their children divorcing and the inheritance that the parents might leave for the children being taken in that divorce. With a properly drafted trust, you can protect your children's inheritances from creditors like the banks, from lawsuits, and even from divorces. For married clients, an additional level of use of a, of a trust is for estate tax planning. Let's look quickly at the most typical uh, trust that we use for married couples. For a married couple, they really have two basic options. Keep it simple or get a little bit more sophisticated. Keeping it simple says, I'll just leave everything to my wife, and when she's gone, she'll do what she thinks best, presumably to the kids, but I don't care because I trust her, and whatever the kids get is a bonus, okay? Keep it simple, keep it easy, don't complicate things, which is not a bad plan, but we're going to see that there may be a better plan tax-wise, option two. Option two is to leave the excess above the estate tax exemption to the spouse, and then create a trust with, an, with the amount equal to the exemption. So, assuming that the tax law comes in next year as we think, where the estate tax comes back with only a $1 million exemption, what we would see is that we would start off, in my example, with a million five hundred thousand dollar estate. Not terribly wealthy people. Option one, first plan, give everything to the spouse. So when I die, give everything to my wife. There's no taxes when I die. My wife has all the money. It's not in a trust. She can do whatever she pleases. She can keep it. She can spend it. She can save it. She can give it away. She can remarry and leave it to a new husband. She won't be happy, but she can leave it to a new husband. <laughs> then at the second death, when, assuming she doesn't remarry or assuming she does leave the same million five to the kids, what happens? Well, there's a million five hundred thousand dollar inheritance for the children, but only a $1 million exemption. The bracket at that point, there's a little bit of 37, a little bit of 39. Basically, the kids wind up paying $210,000 of taxes in this scenario. Now, they still get a million two ninety. They still get almost a million three hundred thousand dollars And that's a heck of a lot more than I started with. But there's a $210,000 tax cost at, at the second death in this scenario. Alternative two, is instead of giving everything to my wife, I create a trust for her benefit. She keeps her half of the marital property because Wisconsin law, 50-50 ownership. But I put my half into a trust for her. So she's got, half, she's got half the estate directly and there's a trust for her benefit. Now, just because there's a trust, that does not mean that it's tied up and it's buried in a hole in the ground in a lockbox and she can't touch it. Quite the contrary, the most typical kind of trust here puts the spouse as the trustee, or at least one of several trustees, puts the spouse as the beneficiary, sometimes the only beneficiary, sometimes the preferred beneficiary, and allows the funds in the trust to support the spouse according to his or her needs. So the trust can be controlled by the spouse and can be exclusively for the spouse and we can even give the surviving spouse the authority to adjust how that trust passes under their own will. So we can give the surviving spouse, like the Ivory Soap commercial used to say, 99 and 44 one hundredths percent pure ownership and control without creating taxes on that at the second death. So in this scenario, we would use the trust to benefit the surviving spouse. When my wife and I are both gone, 
The money that she has left over goes to the kids. The money that I set up in my trust for her goes to the kids. They get the full $1,500,000 inheritance, but they pay zero taxes. So this is a very typical example of how we might use a trust uh, to benefit the surviving spouse and to benefit the kids.